now we are going to discuss about the growth rates you know plant shows growth the growth is a consequence of protoplasmic increase that is protoplasm is increasing as a result of meristematic division that growth can be measured we did talk about that growth can be measured there are various ways supposedly i'm talking about the growth of a pollen tube i would measure that growth in terms of length supposedly i'm measuring a protoplastic growth i would measure it in terms of number of the cells given so you get an idea that growth is measurable and that measurable growth can be represented in the form of the growth rate so we basically deal with growth rate in this lesson what is growth rate the simple and clear cut definition of growth rate is it is the growth of plant or particular plant tissue or an organ to be very specific it is the growth of plant per unit time okay whenever i use the word rate it has something to do with the time and because it is growth rate so it would be the growth that the plant is showing in a given time frame all right the time parameter would come into existence we are going to consider the growth with respect to the time or the time span in which that growth has taken place so the growth rate is growth of plant per unit time and when we study the growth rate we come across two types of growths in a plant one is arithmetic growth rate and other is geometric growth rate now how do we get to these terms what are these arithmetic and geometric growth rate basically it is the representation of the growth in a mathematical form can be known as growth rate whenever we are showing that this is the growth and this is the time frame in which the growth is taking place if it is to be represented in a mathematical form then we have two ways of representing it and we come to a conclusion that there are two types of growth rate that could be visible in a plant first one is arithmetic growth rate and the second one is geometric growth rate now i am going to brush your knowledge of maths little bit you know there is an arithmetic progression that we study that 2 becomes 4 4 becomes 6 6 becomes 8 8 becomes 10 forward and you are adding 2 2 2 to such a progression and other cases of a geometric progression where 2 becomes 4 4 becomes 16 16 becomes 32 so you are sort of squaring the particular number and in case of arithmetic progression you add the same number time and again to the previous number so as the name suggests the in the arithmetic growth the growth would be somewhat slower so for understanding purpose i'm going to make you recall what an arithmetic progression is 2 becomes 4 then 4 to uh 4 to 6 6 to 8 8 to 10 this is how the increase is going on and in the case of geometric growth it is 2 it would be 4 it becomes 16 32 then it becomes 64 now as you can clearly see the increase over here is quite less than the increase that is observed over here so in case of arithmetic progression we don't have to understand the growth in terms of progression basically we are talking about growth it has something to do with cells or the addition of cells which is taking place how the protoplasm is increasing so when i deal with growth basically and i say that it is arithmetic growth i have to see it from the point of cell division mitotic divisions which are taking place inside the cell and how those divisions are adding up to the cell cell content of the plant and how that is leading to the growth and how that is observed in the time span and giving the growth rate long one but you need to understand that it is the in the arithmetic uh, growth rate the growth rate will be in such a way that supposedly you have a single cell this is one cell and it gives rise to a new cell after division uh let's denote it with opposite colors let this be the cell which has the ability to do division and black represents the cell which loses its division ability and gets differentiated i am going to repeat what differentiation is it is the maturation of the cell when cell decides what it has to do and the one which is meristematic cell that retains its ability to divide the only thing that they do in a plant is they keep on dividing and give rise to new cells as you can see over here now this meristematic cell in the second round of division it is going to give rise to another cell okay and this previous one is already present over here let this be one this one is already present this becomes two 
This meristematic cell in the third round of division, it has added another cell and you may see that whichever cells are being added, they are not having the ability to give rise to a new cell. I did not say that this one gave rise to two. It is coming from the meristematic cell. Now such a growth, such a growth basically is the arithmetic growth. All right. When we come to the geometric growth over here, one thing would be different that the meristematic cell, which has the ability to divide, it is not going to give rise to a cell which will not have the ability to divide. I'm repeating this meristematic cell in the arithmetic growth rate, it gave rise to a cell which did not have the ability to divide. That means it got differentiated. In the case of geometric growth, the case will be little bit different. Over here, the meristematic cell is going to give rise to the other meristematic cell which has the ability to divide. Now, in the second round of division, as this also has the ability to divide, this also has the ability to divide, you are going to get four new cells. Supposedly, this is one, this is two. This gave rise to the third cell and fourth cell. Further, this fourth third cell also has the ability to divide. First and second obviously had it and they retain it as well. And then comes the fourth. In the next round of division, this is going to give rise to two cells. So one gives rise to one and two are here. This is going to give rise to another cell. This is also going to give rise to another cell. So after the completion of the round of division, I'm going to end up with eight cells in total. I have made seven already so this would be six seven and eight just for your understanding purpose don't go according to the numbering how we considered and what is being added to which cell just for your understanding i'm trying to tell you that all the cells which are being formed they are retaining their ability to divide that means in the next round of division each cell would add another cell to it which was not in this case that the previous cell did not add I'm sorry, pardon me. The newly formed cell did not add a new cell. It was the meristematic cell that was adding continuously to the growth rate. Now, this growth rate somehow is arithmetic and this is geometric. As you can see, we started with one cell. It gave rise to two cells. Two became four. Four became eight. And over here, we started with one, then became two, then three, then four. In this way, the increase takes place. Now, this is the difference between arithmetic growth rate and geometric growth rate. You would understand it in a better way if we show its graphical presentation as well. So for understanding the graphical presentation, there is an equation. If we plot this arithmetic growth according to the time, supposedly the growth is measured in terms of length of a plant. I'm taking the case of length over here. We are measuring the length of a stem of a plant and it is uh, being measured in a given time frame. So we represent in on the y-axis, I'm going to take the parameter which is being considered length that is, okay, L denotes length over here. Let me write it. Length along the y-axis and time is shown in the x-axis okay over here and time is increasing so one thing starting from l naught l naught is that length when the growth is not taking place we can take it as zero please remember this can be taken as zero so supposedly this is l naught let's not take it zero because it complicates the equation this is the initial stage of the plant from where the growth is to be measured as expected according to this equation at the time t supposedly i'm talking about time t the graph would be a straight line okay this is the length at time t at any given time we are taking this time t and it is represented in the form of a straight line Okay, so we get an arithmetic growth rate, which if portrayed in a graphical form, it gives a straight line and it is shown by this equation that length at any given time, at any given time t, 
for your understanding, I have taken this point. It could be this point, this point, this point. At any time t, it would be the initial length would play a role, which could be 0, L0, that was from where the growth actually started, okay? The L0 point, and it would add to the multiple of time with rate, okay? Rate is to be multiplied with time. Now, what is this R? This is a growth rate basically. All right, we are using it as a constant. This shows the growth rate and it basically shows how the arithmetic growth has taken place. LT would be the parameter which decides what the growth rate would be. Now, coming to the geometric growth rate, over here we have considered, uh, considered the example of increase in weight. And when we talk about um, this geometric growth, we have a term known as relative growth rate, okay? Relative growth rate is also known as efficiency index of the plant. First of all, let us understand what is efficiency index of the plant. Supposedly, we have four cells. Now, the efficiency index would tell that how many cells these four cells could give rise to. Or supposedly, I am having a stem or epical meristem. The ability of that meristem to give rise to the biomass of the plant, that how much growth it can undertake, that is known as the efficiency index. All right. So, we are uh, considering this efficiency index in terms of relative growth rate. When we talk about relative growth rate, there is another term that is known as absolute growth rate that comes into the scene. We are going to understand what is the difference between two. But before we need to understand that what is the geometric growth rate if portrayed graphically. Over here, as you can see, the growth rate is exponential, same way it, this would be weight supposedly along the y-axis and on x-axis I'm taking time. Here we cannot take w naught to be 0 because it is relative. We are talking about efficiency index, that means few cells should be there. So w naught cannot be 0 in any case. This is w naught, the weight with which it began, weight cannot be zero, you know that. The weight, dry weight or the wet weight which we are considering, the dry weight of the plant, we start from W0 and it increases exponentially for some time. It shows a sigmoid curve. You understand what is a sigmoid curve? Somewhat S-shaped, okay? It shows a sigmoid curve where the growth is exponential for some time and it stops after some time, not stops exactly, it becomes stable, stationary sort of phase comes over here. So we have an exponential phase in the growth pattern. In the beginning it is small, then it keeps on increasing and it is denoted by this equation where the point where we are considering W1 at any point at given time t, if we are considering w1, it would be dependent on the initial weight with which the plant started, that is w0, which will not be 0. This is the base of logarithm and it is to be, because this is an exponential equation, we bring into the scene the relative growth rate multiplied by the time in which that growth has taken place. All right, so this is the equation of geometric growth where we have W0 that is the beginning weight of the particular plant multiplied by the exponential of R and T, okay? So this, this as you know, it would be an equation of geometric level, okay? So we get geometric growth rate in this case, exponential growth is being observed. Now the last thing that we need to understand that we uh, introduce the term relative growth in terms of geometric growth. Uh, most of the plants, as you know, the geometric growth is shown by the meristematic cells. Okay. Now, if we have to see the epical meristem of any plant, embryonic stage if I am considering, and here the meristematic cells would be present. So, I am going to take the old convention of using the colors which we took earlier. These red ones are meristematic cells, okay? They are adding these cells. These would remain meristematic. Rest of the cells which are being added, they would be showing geometric growth, all right? These are showing 
uh, sorry pardon me these are showing geometric growth and these would be showing arithmetic growth and when the vascular cambium comes into being then also it is going to show geometric growth instead of the arithmetic growth okay i think i have uh, spoken wrong it's not uh, geometric it's opposite that this vascular cambium will show arithmetic growth instead of the geometric growth geometric growth would be shown only at the tip by the meristematic tissue so this is how embryonic development takes place now coming back to the topic of absolute growth and relative growth because we are considering the growth rates over here efficiency index came into being we are going to talk about the difference between relative growth rate and absolute growth rate as the name suggests when we talk about absolute growth so we do not relate it to any perspective okay what we began with or what we have achieved absolute growth is supposedly the way a length of plant was anything we are not going to consider what was the length in the beginning the increase in length is 7 cm supposedly so that is the absolute growth now please understand how i'm going to explain relative growth to you is that supposedly a plant has shown 7 cm of growth two plants are there we are going to consider two plants one plant has shown 7 cm of the growth while the other one has also shown 7 cm as well this plant the plant number 1 was 2 cm in its height and this plant was 25 cm in the same time they have achieved same growth that means the absolute growth happens to be similar but because this has shown a lot of growth owing to its initial size that is initial length was 2 cm and this had 25 cm even if it has increased 7 cm it would not appear much so the relative growth in terms of the both plants that we have taken into consideration we are talking about the stem length is much higher in this case okay because we are considering a parameter that was initially present we are comparing the particular growth parameter with another one that was initially present and in this case as you can see the growth happens to be it appears to be quite less so relative growth is going to take a previous parameter into account but absolute growth does not tell if actually growth is occurring now i would explain it from uh, with another example where you can see if there is any difference